Welcome back to Mining of Massive Datasets. Um, we're going to continue our uh, lecture on MapReduce and take a look at the MapReduce computational model. So before we look at the actual MapReduce programming uh, model, let's do a warm-up task. Now imagine you have a huge text document, uh, you know, maybe ter terabytes long, um, and you want to count the number of times each distinct word appears in the file. For example, you may want to find out that the word the appears 10 million times and the word, uh, you know, uh, apple appears 433 times, right? Um, and some sample applications of this kind of toy example uh, in real life are, you know, if you have a big web server log and you want to find out how often each URL is accessed, that could be a sample application, or you might be uh, building term statistics uh, for a search engine. Right? So, but for now, let's just imagine that we have this one big file uh, that's a huge text document, and our task is to count the number of times each distinct word appears in that file. So let's look at uh, two cases. The first case is that the uh, file itself is uh, too large for memory because remember we said it's a, it's a big, big file. Uh, but imagine that there are a few enough words in it uh, so that all the word count pairs actually fit in memory. right? Um, how do you solve the problem in this case? Well, it turns out that uh, in this case, a very simple um, uh, approach works. Uh, you could just build a, a hash table uh, with the, the index by word, um, and um, and the hash table for each word uh, will will score will will store the count of the number of times that word appears. So you uh, the first time you see a word. Um, you initialize, um, you know, you, you add an entry to the hash table with that word and set the count to one. And every subsequent time you see the word, you, you increment the count by one. And you, you make a single uh, sweep through the file. And at the end of that, you have uh, the word count pairs for every unique word that appears in the file. So this is a simple program that all of us have written, you know, many, many times uh, in some context or the other. Now let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's, uh, let's imagine that even the word count pairs don't fit in memory, right? The file's too big, it doesn't fit in memory. But there are so many words, in, distinct words in the file that uh, even you can't even hold all the distinct words in memory, right? Now, how do you go about solving the problem in this case? Well, uh, you could try to write some kind of complicated code, uh, but you know I'm lazy, so uh, I like to use uh, Unix file system commands to do this. Um, and so uh, here's how um, I would go about doing this. Um, so this is a, um, a Unix um, command line way of um, of doing this. Um, you know, uh, here the um, the command uh, you know um, uh, words uh, is, is is a little script. Uh, that goes through uh, doc.txt, which is the which is a, a big uh, text file, um, and it outputs the words in it uh, one per line. Um, and once uh, once those words are output, uh, I can pipe them to uh, to a sort, um, and the sort uh, sorts the um, you know sorts the output of uh, that. And um, once you sort it, uh, all the, the um, all occurrences of the same word uh, come together. Uh, and once you do that, you can pipe it to another little handy utility called Unique. Uh, and uh, one of the um, one of the uh, nifty uh, features of Unique is the is the, my, is the, is the dash C option. Uh, and when you do Unique uh, dash C, um, uh, what Unique dash C does is it takes um, a, a run of um, the occurrences of the same word and it just counts the occurrences of the same word. So the output of this uh, is going to be word count uh, pairs, right? So uh, and uh, you know, I, I'm sure many of you have done something like this. Um, and if you've done something like this, you've actually done something that's like MapReduce, right? So this uh, case actually captures uh, the essence of MapReduce. And the nice thing about uh, this kind of implementation is that it's it's very very naturally parallelizable, as we'll see in a, in a moment. So. Um, so let's look at uh, an overview of MapReduce using this example, right? Um, so the uh, the first step that we did uh, was we took the document, which was our input, um, and we wrote a script called words that output one uh, word to a line, right? And this is what's called the map function in uh, in, in in MapReduce. Um, the map function scans the input uh, uh, file record at a time, um, and for each record, it, it pulls out something that you care about. 
uh, in this case, it was words. Uh, and, and the thing that you output for each record, uh, you, can, you, you can output one or multiple things for each record. And the things that you output are called keys. Okay. Um, the second step um, is, uh, is to group by key. Uh, and this is the, uh, what the, the sort step was doing. Uh, it grouped um, all the keys uh, with the same value together. Right? Um, and the, uh, the third step uh, the, uh, is the, the unique uh, minus C step. Uh, that's the reduce piece of MapReduce. Uh, and once um, uh, the reducer uh, looks at all the key, uh, you know, all the uh, keys with the same value, and then it, then it run, runs some kind of function. In this case, uh, it counted uh, the number of times um, the, uh, each key occurred, uh, but, but it could be something much more complicated. Uh, and once it uh, does that kind of analysis, uh, it, it has an answer which it, which it then writes out. Okay? So this is MapReduce in a, in a nutshell. Um, now, the, the outline of this computation actually stays the same, same for any MapReduce computation. What changes is, uh, is that you change the map function and the reduce function to fit the problem that you're actually solving. Right? In this case, uh, for the bird count, uh, the map and the reduce function were quite simple. Uh, in some other problems, the map and the reduce functions might be more complicated. Here's, uh, here's, uh, here's another way of looking at it. You start with, with a bunch of key value pairs. Um, and uh, so here's K, uh, K, v, uh, K stands for key and V stands for value. Um, and um, the, 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 the map step um, takes the key value pairs um, and maps them to intermediate key value pairs. Okay, um, so for example, you run the map on the first key value pair, pair here, KV, um, and it, uh, it actually outputs two intermediate key value pairs. Uh, and the, 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 the intermediate key value pairs did not have the same key uh, as the input key value pair. They could be uh, different keys, um, and there could be multiple of them. Um, and uh, the values, um, although they look the same here, they, they both say V, the values could be uh, different as well. Um, and, uh, and notice in this case, we started with one input key value pair, and the map function produced multiple uh, intermediate key value pairs. So there could be a zero, one, or multiple intermediate key value pairs for each input key value pair. Uh, now let's do it again for the second key value pair. Let's apply the map function. Uh, and it turns out that in this case, we have only one key value pair in the, in the, uh, in the uh, intermediate key value pair in the output. Uh, and so on. So, so we, we run through the entire input file, apply the map function to each input record, um, and create intermediate key value pairs. Now the next step is to take these intermediate key value pairs and group them by key. Right? So all the intermediate key value pairs that have the same key are grouped together. So uh, it turns out that there are three values uh, with, uh, with the first key, two values with the second key, and so on, and they all get grouped together. And this is done by sorting by key um, and then grouping together the value with, uh, you know, the values with the same key. Uh, and these are all different values, although I use the same, uh, same symbol V here. Now once you have, uh, once you have these key value groups, uh, then the final step is the reducer. Uh, the reducer um, it, uh, takes a look at uh, a single, uh, a single uh, key value group as input, um, and it produces uh, produces an output uh, that has the you know that has the same key, uh, but it combines the, uh, the, the 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 values, uh, all the values for a given key into a single value. For example, it could add up all the values. Um, in the, or, or it could, uh, or it could multiply them, or it could do, it could take their average, or it could do something more complicated uh, with with all the values for a given key. Um, and finally, you, the output it outputs a single value uh, for the key. Right, and so when you, when you apply the reducer to the second uh, key value group, uh, you get you get another output, and so on. Uh, and once you apply the reducer to all the intermediate key value groups, uh, you get the final output. So more formally, uh, the input to uh, MapReduce uh, is a set of key value pairs. And the programmer has to specify two methods. The first method is a map method. Uh, and the map method uh, takes uh, an input key value pair and produces an uh, an, a set of intermediate key value pairs, zero or more intermediate key value pairs. 
Um, and there is one map call for every input key value pairs. The reduce function takes an intermediate key value group. Um, the intermediate key value group consists of a key and a set of values for that key. Uh, and the output uh, can consist of uh, one, zero, one, or multiple uh, key value pairs. Uh, once again, uh, the key is the same as the uh, as the input key, uh, but the value is is is, uh, is obtained by combining the input values in some manner. For example, you might uh, add up the um, you know add up the input values, um, and uh, that could be uh, the the output uh, v double prime here. So uh, let's look at the uh, the word count example um, and uh, run that through the MapReduce process again. Here's our big document, um, and uh, um, I hope you can uh, see the text of this you know document. But it doesn't matter. You can see that there are words in there, um, and um, uh, so we're going to take this big document uh, and we're going to take the map function that's provided by the programmer. Uh, the map function reads the uh, input and produces a, produces a set of key value pairs. And the key value pairs in this case um, are going to be uh, the key, uh, each word is going to be a key, and the value is going to be the number one, right? Uh, so for example, uh, the word uh, the and one, uh, crew and one, uh, and so on. And the word the appears again. Um, uh, and so the, there's another the one here, um, and so on. So these are the uh, intermediate key value pairs that are produced by the map function. Now, the next step is the group by key uh, step, uh, which collects together all uh, pairs with the same key. Um, so you can see that, um, that there are two uh, tuples, uh, two intermediate tuples with the, with the key crew, uh, and those are collected together here. Uh, there's one with um, you know with the word space. There are three with the word the, and so on. So, and they're all uh, sorted and collected together uh, in this um, uh, in, in, in this place here. And uh, the, the final step is the reduce step. Uh, uh, the reduce uh, reduce step collects together all the values. So uh, the reduce step adds uh, adds together the two ones from crew. Um, and, and figures out that there are two, uh, you know, two occurrences of the word crew, uh, space has one, there are three tuples with one for the, they're all added together, and the output is three, and so on. Right? So this is a schematic of the, uh, the MapReduce word counting example. Uh, now, of course, uh, this, this whole example doesn't run on a single node. Uh, the data is actually distributed across multiple input nodes. So let's take that into account. And see, here's, uh, here's the data. The data is actually divided here into into multiple nodes. Let's say um, the the red uh, the, uh, the 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 first portion of, of the file is uh, it's chunk one and it's on one node. The second portion of the file here is chunk two, which is on a different node. The third portion is chunk three, and the fourth portion is chunk four, and each of these is on a different node. Um, now the map tasks are going to be run on each of these four different nodes. Um, there's going to be a map task that's run on chunk one uh, that just looks at this portion, the first portion of the file. A map task that's run on chunk two that that, that just looks at the second portion of the file, and so on. Um, and the uh, the outputs of those map tasks will therefore be produced on uh, on four different nodes. Um, uh, like, like so. Um, so here's the here's the first um, chunk of map output, the second chunk of map output, which is on another node, the third chunk of map output, which is on a third node, and the fourth chunk of map output, which is on yet another node. Right. Uh, now the output of the um, uh, of of the map functions are therefore spread across uh, multiple nodes. Um, and what the system then does is that it uh, it it copies uh, the the map outputs. Onto a single node, um, and then uh, see so you can see the data from all these four nodes flowing into this single node here. Uh, and once the data has, has flowed to the single node, it can then sort it uh, by key um, and then do the final reduce step. Okay. Now. Uh, it's a little bit trickier than this, unfortunately, uh, because um, you know you may not want to use a you know to to move all the data from all the map nodes. There may be a lot of it into a single reduced node and sort it there. That might be a lot of uh, you know a lot of sorting. Um, so in practice, uh, you use multiple reduced nodes as well. 
Um, and when you, uh, the, you know, when you run a MapReduce job, you can say, uh, you, you know, you can tell the system to use a certain number of reduce nodes. Let's say you tell the system, in this case, to use three reduce nodes. Um, so if you use uh, three reduce nodes, um, uh, then the um, uh, then the MapReduce system uh, is smart enough to uh, split the, uh, the 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 output. Uh, of the map into into three three uh, into three reduced nodes, and it makes sure that for any given key, uh, in this case the uh, all instances of the, regardless of which um, uh, map node they start out from, always end up at the same reduced node, right? So all instances of the, whether it started from map node one or map node two, uh, ended up at reduced node two in this case, um, and uh, all instances of the word crew. Uh, regardless of whether they started from map node one or map node four, ended up at uh, reduce node one, um, and this is done by using a hash function, right? So the system uses a hash function that hashes uh, each map key um, and determines a single reduce node uh, to ship that tuple to, right? Uh, and this ensures that uh, all um, tuples with the same key end up at the same reduce node. Uh, and once uh, once tuples end up at a reduce node, they get sorted um, as before. Um, in, on each reduce node, um, and uh, and and the result is created now on multiple reduce nodes. So, for example, uh, the result for a crew uh, is now on um, is now on um, reduce node one. Uh, the result for the is now on uh, on reduce node two, uh, and the result for shuttle recently are on reduce node three. So, the final result uh, is actually now spread across uh, three nodes in the system. Uh, which is perfectly fine because you're dealing with a distributed file system, which know, knows that your file is now spread across uh, three nodes in the system. Uh, so you can still access it as a single file uh, in your client, and the system knows to access the data from those three, uh, three independent uh, nodes. One final point before we uh, move on from the slide um, is that um, all this magic, um, the MapReduce uh, magic, is implemented uh, to use um, as far as possible, only sequential scans of disk, uh, as opposed to random accesses. If you think a little bit carefully about all the steps that I mentioned, uh, about uh, how the map function is applied on the input files record by record, how the sorting is done, and so on, uh, a, a moment's thought will make it apparent that you can actually implement all of this uh, by using only sequential reads of disk, and never using random accesses of disk. Um, now, this is super important uh, because sequential reads are much, much more efficient uh, than random accesses to disk. Uh, if you remember from your basics of, uh, of database systems, it, ta it takes much, much longer to do random seeks uh, than to do a single sequential access of a file. And that's why uh, the, the, map the whole MapReduce system is built around doing only sequential uh, reads of files and never random accesses. So um, here's the uh, actual pseudocode for, uh, for the word count uh, using MapReduce. Remember, the um, uh, programmer is required to provide two functions, a map function and a reduce function. Uh, and this is the, uh, the map function right here. The map function takes a key and a value, uh, and its output has to be inter uh, an inter a set of intermediate key value pairs. Um, now, the key in this case is, is the document name, um, and the value is the text of the document. Um, and uh, the map uh, the map function itself is very simple in this case. Uh, it scans the uh, the input document, uh, and for each word um, in the input document, value remember is the input document. For each word uh, in the input document, it emits that word uh, and the number one. So, so it's, it's a tuple whose key is the uh, is the word and whose value is the number one. Uh, and here is the uh, reduce function. Uh, the reduce function uh, remember takes a key and a set of values. Uh, the set of values all correspond to the same key, um, and uh, in this case, they, it just iterates through all the values and uh, and and sums them up, uh, and the output uh, has the same key, uh, and the value is the is the sum. Uh, we look at a very simple example of uh, word count uh, using MapReduce. Now, let's look at a couple more examples. Um, here's uh, here's um, here's another example. Uh, suppose we have a large uh, web corpus that we've crawled, um, and for each um, and we have a metadata file for uh, for our crawl, and each uh, record uh, in the metadata file um, lo uh, looks like this. It has uh, uh, a URL, 
uh, the size uh, of the file, the date it was crawled, and, and various other pieces of data. Now the problem is for each host, uh, we want to find the total number of bytes. Uh, uh, not for each URL, but for each host. Remember, there could be multiple, um, uh, uh, many URLs with the same host name in the crawl, uh, and we want to find the number of bytes associated with each host, not with each URL. Right? Clearly, the uh, the number of bytes associated with the host is just the sum of the number of bytes associated with all the URLs for the, for the host, uh, and this is very easy to implement in uh, in, in MapReduce. Um, the mapper, in this case, the map function. Um, just uh, looks at uh, each record, uh, and uh, it looks at the URL of, of the record um, and outputs the host name of the URL uh, and, uh, and the size. Right? Uh, and uh, the, uh, the reduce function uh, just sums the sizes uh, for each host. Right? And at the end of it, you will have um, this, uh, the, the, the size of each host. Uh, here's another example. Let's say you're building a language model. Uh, by you, you have a large collection of documents, and you want to build a language model. Um, and um, and uh, th this language model, for some reason, uh, requires the count of every five-word sequence. Every unique five-word sequence requires in a large corpus of document. Um, earlier, we looked at uh, counting each unique word. Uh, this example asks for each five-word sequence. Uh, it turns out that the uh, solution is not very uh, different. Uh, the, just the map function differs. The map function uh, extracts, um, you know, goes through each document uh, and outputs every five-word sequence in the document. Um, and uh, the, uh, the reduce function just combines those counts and adds them up, and, and you have the output. So uh, I hope these uh, simple examples uh, illustrate um, uh, how MapReduce works. Um, in the uh, next section, we're going to uh, understand how the underlying system actually implements some of the magic that makes MapReduce work. <laughs>